The Governing Council of the Cat Fancy, the GCCF, are advocates for the health and well-being of all cats. This video will provide an overview of the ears, skull, eyes, nose and jaw, covering all breeds recognised by GCCF for breeders, judges, exhibitors and pet owners. When breeding to modify the shape of any species of animal to produce distinct breed types, there's a danger that selection for exaggerated type may lead to deformities. Some of the defects described in this video can affect the health or comfort of the cat and therefore require correction. Cats which have had such corrective surgery must not be shown. Even if a defect is corrected in the course of performing some other operation, the cat still must not be shown. When considering a cat as part of a potential breeding program, it's important to understand specific traits of a breed and less common defects to ensure breeding is undertaken ethically. Judges are required to withhold first prizes in kitten breed classes when a kitten is not in excellent condition or is undersized for its age and breed. The ears vary in size and setting from breed to breed, but all are pricked, as in the vast majority of non-pedigree cats. Folded ears are caused by a dominant gene that can be received from either parent that can produce severe skeletal deformities in addition to the folded ear itself. In these cats, the cartilage of the pinna, the external part of the ear, is quite firmly folded forward. Occasionally, the tips of normal ears can bend slightly forward or back when a cat is teething or ill. The ear tips usually return to normal when the stressful period is over. The skull of all breeds should be rounded without pronounced protuberances or depressions. In short-headed breeds, the curvatures from front to back and side to side are almost equal, whereas in the long-headed breeds, the curvature is more gentle from front to back than from side to side. In some breeds, particularly those with high-set ears, the head may appear flat on top, although the skull is in fact gently curved. In all breeds, the bony rims of the eye sockets can be felt at the front of the skull, and there's a tendency for this to be more pronounced on short-headed cats. There is also a slight ridge at the back of the skull, pointing towards the neck, and there's a tendency for this to be more prominent in long-headed cats. However, none of these bony ridges should be so pronounced that they detract from the natural curvature of the skull. Carefully assessing the shape of the skull can be done by running a hand over the head of the cat from front to back with the ball of the thumb pressed gently against the skull. The ridge across the front will be felt, followed by a definite dip into which the thumb will sink to a greater or lesser degree before rising again over the dome. Be mindful of any depressions or protrusions. In the condition known as entropion, the upper, lower or both eyelids are deformed so that they tend to roll inwards towards the eye, allowing the hair or lashes to rub against the eye itself. This is often more noticeable when eyes are closing and the rolling can be observed. This obviously causes irritation to the surface of the eye and is most uncomfortable for the cat. A squint may occur in one or both eyes and the eyeball doesn't have its normal range of movement so that the eye appears to look in the same direction permanently, usually towards the nose. Although a squint is unlikely to affect the health of a cat or its offspring, it may impair vision and does detract from the appearance of the cat. In some long-headed cats, especially those with protuberant bone between the eyes, the eyes are very deep set. The haw or third eyelid is often very prominent and it may be impossible to tell if a squint is present and to detect the eye colour. These cats may also suffer from entropion. In some short-headed cats, the eyes are positioned abnormally far apart and show an outward cast, with one pupil facing outward and the other pupil looks forward. These cats often show an abnormal amount of white of the eye. In the condition called nystagmus, the eyes flick or roll from side to side, often becoming worse if the cat is stressed. It may be seen in cats which are brain damaged for a variety of reasons, but can also be seen in otherwise normal cats, especially those with Siamese or colour-pointed coat pattern, in which occasionally a high-frequency oscillatory type of nystagmus occurs that is thought to have a genetic basis. Judges should always consult the duty vet at a show in cases of abnormal eye movement. Some types of nystagmus may warrant veterinary rejection on humane grounds, 
especially if other signs of brain disease are present. Normal nostrils allow free passage of air to and from the nose. If their apertures are reduced, breathing becomes more difficult. Unfortunately, flattened nostrils are often seen in cats which also have reduced nasal cavities, adding further to their breathing problems. Narrow nostrils are easy to detect if looked for. They may look as though they have been pinched from side to side, or from top to bottom, or both, which may cause breathing difficulties. It's often associated with flattened nasal bones and small nose leather. In some cats, the nose leather is a tiny square instead of an ample triangle. The standards of points for short-headed breeds call for a short nose, a short broad nose or a snub nose, not for the absence of a nose. Instead of a short, neat nose, it's as if the nose has been squashed into the face, causing a depression between the eyes and placing the nose leather, often reduced in area, just below the depression between the eyes. A side effect of this is that the skin of the face itself may form folds below the eyes, detracting from the pleasing roundness of the eyes and increasing the likelihood of eye problems and dermatitis. When the nose leather is placed abnormally high, it may also affect the position of the eyes, moving them outwards. The combination of large, bold eyes placed wide apart in a very flat face predisposes the eyes to injury. Jaw problems may occur and are a withholding fault in any breed. By lifting the cat's upper lips gently whilst keeping the cat's mouth closed by supporting the chin and looking at it from the front and side, it's easy to detect jaw faults. If the mouth is actually opened, the faults may be missed. Care must be taken to not angle the cat's head abnormally when checking the bite, since this may make the bite appear abnormal when it's not. Teething kittens may also appear to have irregular bites. In a normal cat, the mouth should be able to close completely, allowing the teeth to shear neatly past one another. When the mouth is closed, the canine teeth should be nearly vertical, the lower canines fitting closely between the upper ones, so that the front of the upper canine and the back of the lower canine touch each other. The canine teeth should not protrude so that they rub on the upper or lower lips. In older cats, it's quite common for the upper canine teeth to be more prominent, literally long in the tooth, but they should still be correctly aligned and cause no discomfort. The six incisors in each jaw should run in straight lines between the canine teeth, and when the mouth is closed, they should meet. This is known as level bite. When the lower jaw protrudes in advance of the upper one, it's commonly known as undershot. When the reverse occurs and the upper jaw protrudes, it's commonly known as overshot. Both are faults in any breed. In a narrow lower jaw, instead of the lower canine teeth fitting neatly between the upper ones, they are too close together, leaving a noticeable gap on either side. There's usually too little space for six incisors to lie in a straight line between the canines, and either they are misaligned or some may be missing. In some cases, the upper, lower or all four canine teeth, instead of being nearly vertical, point forwards or sideways, sometimes almost horizontally. In a twisted lower jaw, instead of being set straight, the jaw may be twisted to one side, or may even be rotated, so that one canine is higher than the other. When assessing this, it's important to try and get the cat to relax, as it's possible for the cat to hold the lower jaw to one side due to muscle tension. Sometimes just letting the cat open its mouth and close naturally will make it release the tension and the jaw will close normally. When the lower jaw is of more normal width, the twist may bring one of the lower canines to lie outside the upper canine and this is impossible to miss. There's sometimes so much distortion that the lower canine can be seen protruding outside the upper lip. In some cats, the whole jaw may show a deviation to one side. When the mouth is closed, the canine teeth should be nearly vertical, the lower canines fitting closely between the upper ones, so that the anterior surface of the left upper canine and the posterior surface of the left lower canine almost touch, and similarly with the right upper and lower canines. The incisor teeth should form a straight line between the canines in both upper and lower jaws. The ideal bite is where the upper and lower incisors meet in alignment. 
Other jaw abnormalities include malocclusion of the cheek teeth, resulting in a mouth which cannot close, although the canines and incisors appear normal. The tongue often protrudes. This effect can also be produced in older cats by excess tartar or loose teeth preventing normal closing. For more information on the GCCF list of veterinary defects and withholding faults, please visit the website.